Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover video on the Auto Trail Expedition 66. So as we start the walk round on the driver's side of the vehicle first, you've got two fridge vents. <laughs> to open any of your external locks, you can use the habitation key, which is this round headed key here. And this opens the cassette locker. And then you'll be able to push both buttons in and release the door. To get the cassette out, if you lift the blue clip up here, you'll be able to slide the cassette cartridge out of the van. And then you can either carry it, or you can lift the handle if it's heavy, and you can wheel it to your disposal point, which is normally beside your toilet block. And to empty, tilt the spout out, take the blue cap off, Start to pour the contents of the cassette out down the disposal point and then as you start to pour, press the blue button. Allow a bit of air and stop the glugging and pour the contents out. Once it's empty, there's normally a tap beside the disposal point. So you put some water in, give it a rinse, tip out again before going in with a cap full of chemical. So this is 120 ml of green or blue chemical which goes direct into the top of the cassette here. And then once the chemical's in, you can pop it back into the van. But ask your sites which they prefer to use, because some sites now want the green as it's more environmentally friendly than the blue, but it's up to the site which chemical they want you to use. You've got a breather pipe here for your wheel water heater, so that will condense and slightly drip, but that's not a fault, that's just how they are, because it's a condensing boiler. You've got a blue tap here, which is your fresh water drain which you drain off in the winter, or if you've taken on a source of contaminated water, or you're simply not using the van for a while, you would just crack the tap open and allow the water out. And then your grey is your dirty water. So this is your water that you've used. So your sink, your shower, and your hand basin. On the way out of your site, you drive over the motorhome service bay. Some of them have got little pits with grids on where you just crack the tap open and allow that to drain down the grid or some of them want you just to drive as close to the hedge or gully on the site as possible, crack the tap open and allow it to drain. You always want your dirty water out before you drive off the site, because otherwise you're just gonna travel around with the more weight on board that you not need, because your dirty water is just gonna eat your payload and mean that your engine will use a lot more fuel because you're adding weight for no reason. To hook the vehicle up, this is your hookup point, so mains 230 volt connection. So whether you're hooking up at home over the winter or to charge it before you go away or you get going on your site, you get your hookup lead, lift the collar, slide it on the van first, then hook the site or the house and do it in reverse order when unhooking so that you're never walking around with a live lead. And when unhooking, if you just push this small blue clip in on the left hand side, it will release the cable so you're not pulling it out the side of the van. On the back you've got two barn doors on the panel van and you can push this button in and climb the doors back to 90 degrees but just do be careful if you fit a bike rack because if you start to do that then the one with the bike rack on will damage the side of the van so you can't do it if you put a bike rack on the doors but if you haven't you can do that. You've got some storage in here, your leisure batteries in there, your chargers further down but we'll show you that when we're inside the vehicle. And you also do have your gas locker. So your gas locker takes a 4.5 propane bottle and it opens with the South Coal key. So it's a sealed locker. And what you do is, you've got one pigtail. So this is what you connect to the top of the cylinder. So it's left to tighten, right to loosen, opposite ways with it being gas. And you just hand tighten it onto the bottle until you can't tighten it with your hands anymore. Then get an adjustable wrench or gas spanner and nip it up. Once you've nipped it up, you can turn the top of the bottle on. Just turn it on one or two turns. You don't need any more than that. Um, just because in an emergency, when you need to isolate it quickly, you can just shut the bottle off. Once you've got the bottle on, situate it in the locker. Stand one side of the bottle over this lip. 
straps around the center of the bottle and tie it tight so it's nice and safe and secure and you've got space for two bottles on board. Always make sure it's turned off before you start traveling so it's safer for you and other road users. Always make sure this door gets shut first and then you can bring this door over. You do have blackout blinds and fly screens on the back windows. Walking down the passenger side, this is your fresh water filling point. So we've showed you how to empty the fresh water. To fill it, you come here, get yourself a hose pipe with some hose pipe fittings as it's mainly just a brass tap provided by the site. Connect it to the tap, put the flat end of the hose into the van and fill it until it overflows or you can look on board your control panel and see how much water is in your fresh water tank. At the passenger door is where you'll find the location for your fuel and add blue. So fuel is diesel, it opens with the main faith decato key as it's a lockable diesel cap. Underneath you've got add blue. Add blue is a 19 litre tank and you can buy this on the pumps or in the drums but I would personally buy it on the pump as you'll be paying about £1.20 maximum a litre for add blue whereas if you buy the drums you're only buying 10 litres of £20 and this takes 19 from empty it'll do five and a half thousand miles on a full 19 litres so it might just be a job you do once a year depending on how many miles you plan on covering yearly in the motorhome and once you've done around 4,000, 4,500 miles and you've got a thousand mile left to go, the light will illuminate on the dashboard and tell you that your ad blue is low. Simply pull into a petrol forecourt, normally where the wagon diesel pumps is, there's ad blue beside it and you can fill your vehicle full of ad blue. Once it starts to come out the top, it's full. Tire pressures are here, so you've got five and a half bar front and back, which is 79.5 psi and the tire size. Underneath the passenger seat is where you'll find your tool kit, which has got a jack, a brace, a tow eye. Underneath this compartment in the cab floor is where the engine battery lives, so it's not underneath the bonnet, it's underneath here if you ever need to change it in the future. And your bonnet release is on the side of the dash. Lifting this up, you do have your screen wash, which is just above the driver's headlight. Three tabs lift this part of the scuttle off and you can fill your coolant. Next to it, you've got your brake fluid. You've got your oil filler, no dipstick as it's an electronic dipstick, no power steering reservoir as it's an electronic steering rack on the new Series 8 Fiat Decato. Paint code on this sticker, Earth for giving or receiving a jump start because the battery's underneath the cab floor so you can jump the van from here or give a jump start from there as well. And then if you put a key just down here, so you've got your air filter, this is the side of your fuse box. Lift this up. So popping your key in here or a flat headed screwdriver and lifting this cover up you've got your positive terminal for giving or receiving a jump start so that's near your air intake and your fuse board behind the passenger headlight. To operate your auto trail control panel you've got your master switch here which will turn on 12 volt from your leisure battery obviously if you are hooked up you will get mains 240 volt household voltage in the vehicle, so you can use all three pin plugs. You've got the master switch for your lights, which are all then individually switched around the van. You do have your pump, which you turn on, making sure that you've got enough water, but you do need your pump on to use your taps, toilet or shower, otherwise you're not gonna get any pressurized water through the lines of the vehicle, because unfortunately it does need the pump to pressurize the water. Awning light, and then you can scroll through so you can see your sergeant unit and its model number. 
your leisure battery is charging so that gives that you're hooked up and we're at 13.4 volts take the hook about to get a true reading of your leisure battery you can view your vehicle battery at 12.7 and it's got good there your fresh water and your waste water readings your select battery always wants to be the leisure because that's the battery that's used to power the motorhome don't let that be the vehicle battery if it is you can change it here by just pressing but you always want that to be the leisure because that's the battery that's designed to use the power for the motorhome don't let that be the vehicle because it could flatten the engine battery and you've got the inside temperature and humidity and you can change your time when the clocks go back and forwards and that is your auto trail control panel so to operate your heating and hot water which is wheel heat air controls you've got to put your hand within proximity of the controls and it will take them out of sleep mode so starting off with the heating of the vehicle first using the plus and minus you've got frost start which is approximately five degrees but then you do have to have either the gas or electric on to enable this to work which i'll get onto in a moment you've got nighttime mode which is the moon which is approximately 15 degrees and then you can bring it all the way around to the max temperature of 30 degrees gas press it goes blue that means the gas is on standby and then it will go to orange and ignite once it's pulled the gas through to the heater via the gas supply of the vehicle once the vehicle has reached its temperature set the gas will go back on a standby which is blue until it drops and the thermostat picks up that it's dropped temperature and then it will kick back in and ignite to warm the vehicle back up you'd use gas if you were wild camping if you're on a site you can use electric so you've got three different power supply outputs on the gas so depending on how much electric you've got on your site and what the amperage they're giving you is you've got one so just press and hold you've got one which is 750 watts You've got two which is 1500 watts and you've got three which is 3000 watts and you can see that's gone on to orange now which means it's ignited on electric but you can put the gas on as well and this is what's called boost so if you needed to boost the temperature of the vehicle you can put both on together and it will maximize both sources which will reduce the time it takes to heat the vehicle should you get a red exclamation mark down the side you've got a reset button here but what you can do is you can press the red exclamation mark and it will tell you on these codes here so many bars will light up and it will give you the fault code but press and hold the button which will restart the control panel and eliminate the fault to operate the hot water system so again you've got frost start which is five degrees keeps the water in the boiler above five degrees but again you do have to have gas or electric available to the vehicle should you not have that in the winter we strongly advise that you winterize and get rid of all the water on board you've got eco mode which is heats the water to approximately 50 degrees and then you've got full heat which is 70 degrees down here gas if you're well camping or you've got 750 watts of electric 1500 watts of electric and three kilowatts or 3000 watts should i say of electric press the gas flame blue means it's on standby once it goes to orange like the temperature for the heating has on gas it is working on gas and again once that water gets the temperature whatever source you've got it on whether it be gas or electric 
it'll go back onto standby until the water cools down before it kicks back in so don't worry if you've put it on it's gone to orange and then 20 minutes later it's back on blue just means your water or your vehicle is up to temperature and you can see there that they've both come on and they're both working again both settings together is boost so you might want to boost your hot water if you're in desperate need of hot water for a shower and then once you've boosted it, just turn your gas off and allow the electric to continue to heat the water if you're on a site, as you wouldn't want to waste your gas when you've paid your site fees to use their electric. And that are your wheel heat air controls. Reset buttons can be found on the bottom of both dials. In the bottom of the kitchen cupboard, there's a fuse spur here, and that's for the electric side to your boiler. So make sure that that's always switched on. If you are having any problems with trying to get the electric side to illuminate and it's not illuminating, just make sure this is switched on. Otherwise, that could be the cause of problem. You could have knocked it when getting things in and out of your cupboard. Directly underneath your oven is the location of your boiler drain. So your boiler drain is this yellow toggle here, which is currently pointing towards the cab. When you've finished using it in the winter and you've drained off your fresh, your waste, you've left all your taps open within the van, what you're wanting to do is you want to drain off the boiler because the boiler holds 10 litres of water at a time and when not in use, it's very important that you drain it down because if not, the water could freeze and it isn't covered under manufacturer's warranty for frost damage as it's your responsibility to drain the vehicle down. So what you need to do is you need to point it towards the driver's side of the vehicle to the washroom door and it will drain off all 10 litres of water directly out underneath your boiler. Open that up, open your taps and then put the control panel on Put the pump on for about five to 10 seconds. It'll just squirt any water out that's still in there and then turn it off. Don't leave it on any longer than that. Otherwise you could damage the pump with no water being in. But it does just blow the water that's in the pump out. So it makes sure that the pump is safely winterized as well. When you come to reuse it, back towards the cab in that position there. Shut the taps, shut the fresh and the waste, fill the vehicle with water. Cold water from outside, which will be over here, comes in here. In the tank, pump on, cold side open on the tap, slowly go around the hot. You'll get a lot of air compre compressed out the tap until you get a free flow of water from the hot side. This is when you know that your boiler has reached maximum capacity of 10 litres in the boiler. At the back, you do have your gas taps so any problems with gas you can turn off each gas appliance there or if you want to completely shut off the gas you can turn all of them off so that no gas is physically coming from the tank into the motorhome but there is a main stopcock on the gas tank at the back underneath the vehicle so underneath the long bench seat at the back on the driver's side like i was saying from outside this is the location of your leisure battery and you've got a 20 amp fuse here so that's your main 12 volt battery fuse but you've also got your ec176 power supply unit from sergeant which has all your 12 volt fuses in which are all marked on what amperage and what fuse does which this side you do have your main trip tester so if you're struggling and thinking the vehicle wasn't receiving power if you try and trip her out if she trips, she's receiving power. If she doesn't trip, the motorhome isn't getting any power through the hookup lead. So it could be the site or where you've got the vehicle plugged into. This needs to be pushed in and illuminated for the heater to work on electric. And that is your charger charging your leisure battery on mains. Leave them as they are. If you have got any problems, this would be the first place I would try just to see if these have been pushed out. But they should illuminate when hooked up. 12 volt system shutdown button so this will shut all 12 volt off including the head unit and reversing camera in the winter so if you're taking her out for a spin in the winter which we advise you to do and you're wonder, wondering why the reversing camera and the head unit isn't working if you've turned this off to stop a 12 volt drain that needs to be turned on for the head unit to work 
other fuse here and a module just your crossover from your cab i think and to make the bed up so you've got two bars which go in here and the bars sit at the back so not on this one on the other side the bars will be underneath the seat so if you lift it up you'll see the bars there they go in here these slide out and then the back rests which are these go in the middle here uh, or you can pull the base cushions forward and put the backrests at the back. It's entirely up to you. But what I would do is turn the seats upside down because you get a flatter surface to sleep on, sleeping on the backs of the cushions instead of sleeping on the fronts, which is where you've got your bull nose and your tapered edge. But that's how you'd make the back bed up. Pole for the table is in the wardrobe. If you can put the table at the back there with the table top in here in your washroom which is a wet room you do have your toilet so starting off with the toilet you can spin the toilet round press the blue button making sure that the pump's on and you'll get a fresh water flush flush your toilet and put a small amount of toilet water from the flush in the bowl and then open the blade before you use it which is this grey lever here so slide it to the left that just helps lubricate the seal between the toilet and the top of the cassette you can now use the toilet give it a good flush after use and close the blade to the right if you want to leave the blade open and try and get the cassette out when it indicates it's full which you'll get three green lights underneath the diagram of the cassette here it will not come out because the mechanism is engaged if you're cleaning the bowl and you've got you've bought the twin pack of the pink and the blue just put some pink in a dilute in a bottle dilute it spray it it'll do the same thing it'll get a nice fragrant smell and it will keep this bowl clean do not use any harsh bleaches on any of the plastic in the washroom including the shower tray light wipes soap anything microfiber cloths nothing harsh because you'll take the shine off the toilet the shower tray and the sink you've got to use light chemicals to avoid this from becoming discolored when winterizing as well make sure you unscrew your shower head from the hose and lie the hose in the shower tray with the mixer tap open there's your shower curtain which will come round and pressed it on to stop the toilet from getting wet got a toilet roll holder, towel rail holder and a hanger and if you push these in you've got some toilet sprays, a complimentary bottle of blue for the cassette you'll get one cap out of that and you've got your sink so when you've used this always tip it up slowly and fold the tap away as it's got to go into the channel and if you put too much water in, you can flood the vehicle. And ensure this sink is is open, so down like so when travelling, just to avoid it from springing open and giving you a fright when you're driving. So to operate this type of Fetford fridge, so first of all, to turn the fridge on and off, it's this button here, which is the square button, which you just press and hold. The blue light indicates that it's on and if you press the square button it will tell you which source it's on and the temperature reading that you've currently set. A stands for automatic energy selection so the brain of the fridge picks out the best source available at the motorhome at any one time and it will always prioritise mains 230 volt hookup first. If mains can't be found and you've got the gas bottle open it will switch over by itself to gas. If you start the vehicle's engine, it will switch over at the battery setting, which isn't off your leisure battery, it's off your vehicle battery, and is only designed to be used when the fridge is down to temperature and you're driving from home to your first site or from the site to the next site. It will keep it like a giant cool box, it will keep it at the same temperature when traveling, so that when you get there, your shopping is still edible and fresh. When 
knocking the engine off, and if you are going wild camping, it will light on gas. It waits 20 minutes before lighting on gas once the engine's been knocked off. In case you've left the gas bottle open, this is a safety feature on this fridge. So if you pulled in for a petrol, or should I say diesel, the last thing you want to do is for it to spark where there's petrol fumes. So that's why it gives you a 20 minute window to fill up and get out of the petrol forecourt. But it's always best that you turn your gas bottle off when traveling. However, if you want to override and manually select the source, you just press the square button here. Use the arrows to move it through the source that you want and select with enter. Select the temperature and enter. And there you go, I've manually selected mains hook up. But I would just personally leave it on automatic and it'll do its own thing for you. And the only time you'll need to turn that off is if you're going wild camping and self and self select gas when not using it turn it off o open the fridge door and there's a little toggle underneath the handle as it's got an, an airtight seal rubber there you don't want to shut this and from time to time you want to give it a wipe out with some antibacterial wipes leave the door open when you're storing the van because what will happen is you'll trap the air in there and it'll start to smell if you shut the door over a long period of time You'll get a funny smell because you're trapping that clean air in the fridge and it can't get out. Please be careful if you do open this window, because on this window you are allowed to open it, but I would advise not opening that window because if you open the sliding door, you're going to rip that window off because the sliding door comes to about here, so it's going to hit that window. So do be careful, and like I say, I will get into a habit of not using that window and using the two on the back doors and this one here. So now to, to make the rear beds, so you can use them as singles if you're short enough or you can form one double bed and there's two bars underneath each base cushion. You need these bars out to form the bed base. So what you need to do is you need to get them out. There's two here and there's two underneath the other side. You need all four to create the structure for the double bed. They go in, three at this side, so you'd lift one side up, put the flat end in this side first, and then that'll drop down into there. This side in first again, and that side, So three towards the back barn doors, one towards the front section. So in there, lift that up, pop that in there. And then what you can do is you can pull the structure out. So pull the front of the seat bases out, forms the infill, backrests into the middle and they form a tight seal in the middle for your large double bed. I'll turn the base cushions upside down as well because you get the flatter surface to sleep on, put a fitted sheet on and there you have your double bed.